Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Home is where our heart is. I am Dane. And I'm Steli. Today we're going to dive into the wildflowers. Walking through this wildflower meadow, the senses are just evoked with childhood memories. The sights and the sounds and the smells, all these beautiful wildflowers in this amazing meadow. This reminds me of as a child looking at the little green backed bugs, watching little rows of ants chasing butterflies, the buzzing of the bees, and then as dusk falls, that operatic sound of crickets and the soft flutter of the moth. These bright, beautiful wildflower meadows don't just invoke the lovely feelings of love and nostalgia, they're actually a seriously vital part of the UK's biodiversity and ecosystem. Each wildflower meadow can contain up to 140 different species of wildflower growing and living together at any one time. But just as importantly, wildflower meadows are an important shelter and food source for thousands of different types of insects. Bees, butterflies, moths, beetles, to name a few, and these wildflowers provide food, most importantly, for our precious pollinators. Now, pollinators are what keep our earth flourishing with life and keep things growing abundantly. But did you know that since the 1930s, shockingly, the UK has destroyed not 10%, not 50%, but 97% of its wildflower meadows? Let's just take a moment to digest that number for a moment. 97%. This is due to our massive expansion of our building developments and farming and the uses of massively damaging chemicals such as pesticides. We have quite literally dug up and poured concrete and chemicals over 97% of our wildflower meadows, almost wiping them out completely. Now only 3% of the wildflower meadows remain. Can you imagine a future without fields of wildflowers? Not only is it hard to imagine, it's not even a sustainable future. Without the wildflowers enriching the earth and feeding the insects, the insects can't pollinate things that give us things like fruit and vegetables, and the mammals can't come along and eat those insects. It's a vital part of the circle of life here in the UK. So let's talk about some of our lovely wildflowers. These are oxeye daisies and they're perfect for our pollinators because they've got these big yellow centres so the bees will come along and they'll collect the nectar and the pollen and uh, they'll have a great time. Just like this little bumblebee is here. <laughs> Guess what this lovely purple flower is? It's called mallow. This purple flower plant gave us the original ingredient for our campfire favourite confectionery, the marshmallow. The taproot in this plant gives the marshmallow its distinctively gooey consistency. This guy looks like a dandelion, but he's actually a species all of his own. It's called crepes, but also known as hawk's beard. Crepes supports many butterflies and moths notably the broad barred white moth. Moths have been in decline for a while and we have lost over a quarter since 1968. Here in southern Britain this decline is even worse with numbers down as much as 40%. And then we have the dandelion, perhaps one of our most important wildflowers. The dandelion blooms so early in spring. It's a vital early food source for our bees and insects. A really easy way of rewilding and supporting our precious pollinators is by simply leaving the mower in the shed. Leave the dandelions alone and let these bright spots of sunshine blossom. Chamomile is one of my favourite wildflowers, commonly found in hot drinks, nice warm herbal teas as a relaxing and calming drink. This beautiful wildflower chamomile plant is also used as a natural repellent against things like carrot fly and even mosquitoes. Once again, nature is showing us that if the balance is allowed to flourish, each part of nature can thrive together. Chamomile, unfortunately, is being pushed out by monoculture farming practices and is now 
scarce as a wild flower, even though it's such a common, delicious hot drink, it's no longer being found in our wild spaces. So what exactly are we going to do about it? Well firstly, if you see some local land that's rich in wildflowers, that's going to be developed on, built upon and destroyed, then challenge that. Start a local petition and do everything you can to preserve that beautiful patch of wildflowers. Secondly, challenge your local authorities because take this side of this pathway for example. Just one month ago, this pathway was absolutely blooming in bluebells and beautiful daffodils until the council came along and chopped it all down. We happened to have taken a picture of our little beautiful Maddie sitting in the flowers that was here. Have a look at how beautiful this was just one month ago. Now, do we want the sides of our roads and our country roads to look like this? Or this? This incredible urban green space has been transformed into a wildflower meadow full of butterflies and bumblebees and perfect pollinators. So guys, let's get gardening. Let's turn our city spaces into these beautiful pollinating palaces for our lovely insects and bugs. this incredible example of a mini meadow. There is literally hundreds of bees buzzing around right now before me, collecting their nectar and living their best life, all because of this tiny community has decided to turn this once boring green verge into a wildflower mini bed meadow. It is absolutely incredible. We have such a mixture of wildflowers and this meadow is only two years old. It took just two years to plant some wildflowers. They've spread and it's become an incredible mini meadow. If you guys want to do something like this at home, an idea of what kind of plants you should grow is see down here a little forget-me-nots, beautiful plants, and then a little bit higher we've got love in the mist. And then here we've got some poppies. And as we go along, we've got some foxgloves coming up here as well. And the power of community can really be felt here in this amazing urban green space that was just nettled before. It was one crop, it was one plant all the way down, all sea nettled. And now it's just got so much abundance and biodiversity. And from speaking to people here who planted this, they said it was coming together as a community that was actually something that really got them going. So when they open their window in the morning and they look out at this amazing grass verge, they're seeing this beautiful environment. It's not only good for the pollinators, but it's super, super good for our well-being too. Just look how beautiful this is. So please do guys, don't be shy, get in touch with your neighbours, get in touch with people local to you, get your community together and let's rewild our green spaces and make them beautiful just like this. So another thing we can do is we must rewild as much of the UK as we can. Did you know we've lost over 3 million hectares of the UK's wildflower meadows since 1938? 3 million hectares! That's a land size bigger than Wales! But there is something that we can all do at home. We can make it better as a nation because did you know that all the gardens across the UK, when you combine their land mass together, they cover more than all of our nature reserves combined. So if we all devote some of our garden back to wildflowers, it will really have an impact on the natural balance of this country. Let's just ponder that for one moment. All the gardens in the UK add up to more green space than all of the nature's reserves combined. That's crazy. Imagine the impact that we can have with our wildflowers towards wildlife if we all devote certain parts of our gardens towards it. And that's not even including balcony space and window space. Combine all of that and we can seriously take a positive step in the right direction of making a more flower 
fulfilled, colourful future. But there's one thing that I need to stress. When we're rewilding all of this land and all of our gardens, let's use native wildflower seeds because all of the wildlife within our country has evolved alongside these wildflowers. So they much prefer native wildflowers. Plus we don't want to introduce flowers from other countries because they can bring with them things like pests and diseases. We want to bring back the native wildflowers because that's truly what the wildlife wants. So a really important thing we need to do is to stop over mowing our yeah. gardens and our natural green spaces. <coughs> We need to change that old mindset and labelling plants as weeds because there's no such thing as a weed. A weed is just a flower growing where someone doesn't want it to. Globally, we spend hundreds of millions of pounds every single year on chemicals that cause massive environmental harm to create, damage our health to use, and then we pour these chemicals all over the land to kill flowers, destroying the natural soil for years to come. But why? Why do we desire to have such an unnatural garden of just pure grass? What's more beautiful, an unnatural patch of plain grass that gives back nothing to nature or a garden full of bright, vibrant flowers that are full of blooming, flourishing, buzzing wildlife with butterflies and bees. So we can do this, people. We need to protect the wildflower meadows that we still have and we need to rewild as much of the country's green space as we can to help restore that precious balance between us and nature. We found out how wildflowers can hold medical breakthroughs with the foxglove and we found out how wildflowers are the very foundation of our food chain. Without the wildflowers, there's not a lot for us to eat. There'd be no fruit, no raspberries, no strawberries. Those busy bumblebees are spending so much time pollinating our strawberry fields and our apple trees. Let's make them a really, really nice environment that they can thrive in too. Exactly, because every single flower of the future, people, is in the seeds of today. Anyway, we'll see you all next time. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in supporting us, to create more content like this, then join our Patreon. We'll see you all next time. Peace.